Our story begins in 1923, in the city of Nuteich, now known as Gdańsk, Poland. Here, Elizabeth Becker was born into a world on the brink of unprecedented conflict. The daughter of a carpenter, Becker's early life was largely unremarkable. She was raised in a region caught between the shifting tides of nations, a place that would soon become the epicenter of one of the darkest periods in human history. As she grew, so did the shadow of Nazism over Europe. The rise of Adolf Hitler's regime in 1933 marked a turning point in Becker's life, as it did for many young Germans. The pervading ideology of the time was one that promised a better future but at a terrible cost. In 1940, at just 17 years old, Becker joined the League of German Girls, the female branch of the Hitler Youth. This was a common path for many young women at the time, drawn in by a sense of duty, nationalism, or simply the promise of employment. However, this decision set Becker on a path that would lead her far from the typical duties of a German girl. Two years later, Elisabeth Becker found herself donning the uniform of an SS camp guard and stepping through the gates of Stutthof concentration camp. The camp, located near her hometown, was a place of unimaginable horrors. Here, Becker was not a bystander, but an active participant, contributing to the suffering of those unfortunate enough to be interned within its walls. While it's difficult to ascertain what led Becker to join the ranks of the SS, her actions at Stutthof marked her as an instrument of the Nazi regime's brutality. Her life had taken a dark turn, one that would lead to her becoming a symbol of the atrocities committed during the Holocaust. Little did she know that her actions would soon cast a long and dark shadow over history. At Stutthof, Becker would play a part in the systematic atrocities that have since shocked and horrified the world. As a guard, she was responsible for maintaining the brutal order of the camp, a role that saw her involved in a range of unspeakable acts. Stutthof was a place where humanity was stripped away, where innocent people were subjected to relentless cruelty. Becker was complicit in this, contributing to the suffering of the camp's prisoners. She was involved in the enforcement of forced labor, a grueling process that pushed prisoners beyond the limits of human endurance. Moreover, Becker was implicated in the horrific acts of murder that took place within the camp. These were not spontaneous acts of violence, but methodical, calculated actions, part of the systematic extermination carried out by the Nazis. Becker stood by, and in some cases, actively participated in these killings, fully aware of their horrific nature. Torture was another grim reality of life in Stutthof, a tool used to inflict pain and fear. Becker was no stranger to this, using it to maintain control and order. The pain she inflicted was not only physical but psychological, leaving deep scars on the survivors. It's important to remember that these were not random acts of cruelty. They were part of a larger, systemic process designed to dehumanize and exterminate an entire group of people. Becker's role in this process was not a passive one. She was an active participant contributing to the suffering and death of countless individuals. To fully understand the extent of Becker's crimes, we must confront the harsh realities of the concentration camp. We must remember the pain, the suffering, and the loss of life. We must acknowledge her role in these horrific acts. Not to sensationalize, but to bear witness to history and to ensure that such atrocities are never repeated. Her actions at Stutthof were a stark example of the horrific depths humanity can sink to. The story of Elizabeth Becker serves as a grim reminder of the destructive power of hate and the importance of vigilance in the face of injustice. When the war ended, the long arm of justice reached out for Becker and her fellow SS guards. The curtain of conflict had fallen, but for Elizabeth Becker, a new chapter was just beginning. Captured by Allied forces, she found herself standing before a court, accused of committing some of the most heinous crimes known to humanity. The trial that ensued was a spectacle of justice in action. As the prosecution presented its case, the chilling details of Becker's role at Stutthof concentration camp began to emerge. Documents, photographs, and testimonies painted a grim picture of the brutalities inflicted upon innocent lives, and Becker's involvement was undeniable. One by one, survivors took the stand, their voices echoing through the courtroom. Their testimonies, each more harrowing than the last, brought to light the inhumanity of the Nazi regime 
and the part Becker played in it. Their words were not just an indictment of Becker, but a testament to their own resilience and the human spirit's ability to endure. As the evidence stacked against Becker, it became increasingly clear that she was not merely a bystander in the face of atrocity. She was an active participant in a system designed to dehumanize and destroy. Each piece of evidence, every survivor's testimony, was a nail in the coffin of Becker's defense. The trial's conclusion was as inevitable as it was necessary. Elizabeth Becker, once a guard at Stutthof, was found guilty of crimes against humanity. Her actions, carried out under the banner of the Nazi regime, were deemed inexcusable, a stain on the conscience of mankind. The court's verdict was clear, Becker was guilty of crimes against humanity. It was a verdict that echoed across the globe, a declaration that the atrocities committed during World War II would not go unpunished. It was a message to the world, a promise to the victims, and a reminder to future generations. Justice may be delayed, but it will not be denied. On July 4, 1946, Elizabeth Becker faced the ultimate consequence for her actions. The world had shifted dramatically in the year since the end of the war. The Nuremberg trials had begun, and the international community was grappling with the task of holding accountable those responsible for the atrocities committed during the war. In a courtroom not far from the now quiet and deserted Stutthof concentration camp, Becker stood trial. The testimonies of survivors, the concrete evidence of her participation in the crimes, and the weight of the world's condemnation bore down on her. She was found guilty of crimes against humanity, and her sentence was death. Her execution was not a spectacle but a solemn event, marked by the gravity of her crimes and the weight of justice. It served as a chilling moment of reckoning for the horrors that had occurred under the Nazi regime. It wasn't about revenge, but about retribution, about ensuring that those responsible for such immense suffering were held accountable. Elizabeth Becker's execution also marked a turning point in the world's understanding of justice. It was a testament to the international community's commitment to uphold the principles of human rights, even in the face of unimaginable cruelty. The trial and execution of war criminals like Becker underscored the importance of the rule of law and the unacceptability of impunity. Yet, her execution was not a closure, but a reminder. A reminder of the cost of hate, of the price of indifference, of the consequences of turning a blind eye to injustice. It was a stark symbol of the human capacity for cruelty, but also of our shared responsibility to prevent such horrors from happening again. In the end, Elizabeth Becker's execution was a grim symbol of justice, a reminder of the cost of her actions. It was a testament to the world's commitment to uphold the principles of human rights and the rule of law, even in the face of unimaginable cruelty. And as we remember her and the countless others who suffered under the Nazi regime, we are reminded of our responsibility to strive for a world where such atrocities can never happen again. The story of Elizabeth Becker is a grim chapter in our history, but one that holds important lessons for us all. It is a stark reminder of the depths to which humanity can sink when consumed by hatred and prejudice. It underscores the importance of vigilance against such destructive ideologies and the necessity of holding individuals accountable for their actions, regardless of the circumstances. Elizabeth Becker's story also highlights the critical role of justice in the aftermath of atrocity. The capture, trial, and execution of Becker and others involved in the Holocaust was a significant part of the global effort to bring Nazi war criminals to justice. This process was not only about retribution, it was, and still is, about acknowledging the suffering of the victims, honoring their memory, and sending a clear message that such crimes against humanity will not be tolerated. Furthermore, Becker's story serves as a poignant reminder of the power of individual choice. Each person has the capacity for good and evil, and the choices we make can have far-reaching consequences. Becker chose to participate in the systemic atrocities of the Holocaust, and she faced the consequences of those choices. This serves as a sobering lesson about personal responsibility and the impact of our actions on others. Finally, the story of Elizabeth Becker emphasizes the importance of remembrance. By remembering the past and learning from it, we can strive to prevent such horrors from happening again. 
It is our duty to keep the memory of the victims alive, to tell their stories, and to stand up against hatred and intolerance wherever we see it. As we remember the victims and reflect on the past, we must reaffirm our commitment to a future where such atrocities can never happen again. This commitment requires constant vigilance, an unwavering dedication to justice, and a steadfast belief in the inherent dignity and worth of every individual. It is a commitment that we must all make, not just for ourselves, but for the generations to come. As we conclude our journey through the life of Elizabeth Becker, we are left with a multitude of lessons and reflections. Becker's story is an undeniable testament to the dark side of humanity, a side that we must never forget, lest we repeat the same mistakes. It is our responsibility to remember, to learn, and to act. We must stand vigilant against hatred and prejudice, uphold justice, and honor the memory of the victims. We hope that this video has provided you with a greater understanding of the historical context and personal choices that led to Becker's crimes and their consequences. We invite you to join us in our mission to make history accessible, engaging, and relevant. By sharing these stories, we can ensure that the lessons of the past continue to inform our present and shape our future. If you found this video informative and valuable, we ask that you do three things. First, like this video to help it reach a wider audience. Second, share it with your friends, family, and social networks to spark important conversations about history and its relevance today. And third, subscribe to our channel for more historical content. Together, we can make sure that the past is not forgotten and that its lessons continue to guide us. Thank you for watching, for learning, and for joining us in this important endeavor.